We are chatting today with Hans Sturm about his new album, Rose Finger Dawn. That's what's coming up for you today here on Contrabass Conversations. You claim to be Welcome to the show. I am your host, Jason Heath. So glad to be joined again by Hans Sturm. I had Hans on the program about a year ago, a year and change, and it was the first time I'd really sat down and done an in-depth interview with Hans. But I've known Hans for years. I think I've known Hans for, let's see, 1994 was the first time I met Hans. He was doing a doctoral recital at Northwestern. He had been studying with Jeff Bradditch. Jeff had moved on to the University of North Texas, but I wandered into this recital, and that began a long time association, decades at this point. Hans brought me on board to be a member of the International Society of Bassists Board of Directors about 10 years ago, and it was so great to get involved with that organization. I'm back on the board doing some other things now. Hans also, around the same time, he and I shot a series of videos about the Raboff technique that have been hilariously large numbers of views on these videos, especially given the grunginess. I think I'm in a Hawaiian shirt. We're in my Evanston apartment. My cat's jumping around behind us, but quite popular nevertheless. And the interview last year, so inspiring to talk to Hans. So Hans had at that point released A Day in Paris. He's now back a year later with Rose Finger Dawn with his wife, Jackie Allen, the fabulous jazz singer. We dig into the makings of this album, the tracks, and much more. I'm going to see how many short excerpts I can pack in to this episode. So you're really going to enjoy this. And I have been grooving on this album. It is a great album, folks. Definitely check it out. And we've got some great sponsors for this episode. I want to give a shout out here at the beginning to Diderio Strings. Thanks for being on board, guys. Longtime sponsor of the podcast. And check out their Helicor Strings. They are some of the most customizable string setups available in the business. You can get orchestral, hybrid, pizzicato, and solo string sets, different gauges. They work for all kinds of bases. For years and years, I used the hybrid strings, which were wonderful for orchestral playing, but also had a great growl for jazz. Diderio's got all kinds of strings to fit your budget and whatever bass you happen to play on. So check them out at diderio.com and thank you for sponsoring the podcast. Thank you also to Robertson and Sons Violins. For more than four decades, Robertson and Sons has specialized in providing the highest quality string instruments and bows to collectors, professional musicians, music educators, and students of all ages. And we are featuring several Robertson's basses. If you go to ContrabassConversations.com, you'll be able to check out the base of the week and download more information and learn more about what's available at the shop, at this fabulous facility, by the way, you need to get to Albuquerque if you haven't before, and go to their recital hall. Try out bases in there. It's a real treat. So check out RobertsonViolins.com, and thanks for sponsoring the podcast, Robertsons. Uh, Also, Upton Bass String Instrument Company, Upton's Car Model Double Bass is the first model that Gary Carr commercially endorses. It has a wonderful blend of comfort and tone, and it has a loyal following with jazz players, roots players, and even crossover electric players due to the slim, long car neck. UptonBass.com will get you all the details, and thanks for sponsoring the podcast. All right, we are diving in with our conversation with Hans Sturm, and you'll be hearing all kinds of excerpts from this fabulous new album, Rose Finger Dawn. I can't believe you got this album out because I like the a day in Paris was like a year ago, year and a half ago, yeah. something like that, right? Yeah, right. But but both of these, I mean, yeah, it does it does feel like that. But you know how it goes. I mean, they're 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 projects um, percolating, and and sometimes it takes a while for them to come out. So 
uh, the, the day in Paris, although it came out um, uh, last year, uh, it, it sometimes takes some time for you know the project to come to to, to fruition. So like that that day in Paris CD. I mean, we, we we recorded the tracks one day. I think it was back in 2012 uh, uh, after the, um, uh, the the Base Europe uh, Congress in Copenhagen. We came back through Paris. Uh, but it took time to, to to raise the money, and you know we get back, you get back from something like that, and you're right back in the middle of the semester, and it's not like, you know, we're doing this full time as professionals. You know, we're doing, we we have everything. We you know we're teaching and we're running around and doing all the other stuff. So this project with uh, with the Jackie, the Rose Finger Don, is like it's like five years, you know, really from when we first did the session, but. We did the session because we had this big concert and the Chicago band was coming in and we were very excited about that. And so I thought, well, if we get the guys to stay another um, a day or two, uh, we'll just go, we'll go into the studio and, 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 and record because I've been writing these original songs for Jackie for um, a long time and we were going to do this, this concert of originals. Um, but then, you know, all, uh, you know, life, ex- things happen, life explodes. We had another CD actually in the, Uh, in the pipeline that was further along. Um, But we finally, you know, we finally got this one. And this was supported by by Kickstarter, too. So it was a lot for those people who, uh, 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 you know, invested in the Kickstarter. I'm sorry. (laughs) But but it's but it's done. and, and, And they've all been they've all been mailed out. So so we're very excited about about the project. It is a groovy album. I, I am digging this album. But so so was this? This was another like you recorded all this like in a pretty short space of time, like at, with that a few years back with that that band that stayed in town. Yeah, uh, the 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 basic rhythm tracks all were done back then, but there were issues. Like um, uh, we we were in the uh, in, in the studio. We were supposed to be able to use um, uh, the piano and the organ in the studio. Um, uh, the piano wound up uh, over the course of the of the two days that we were in the piano uh, wound up going pretty badly out of tune. Uh, the uh, Leslie speaker for the B three had a bunch of rattles. So there were certain tracks we couldn't use. So then, okay, now we've got to make another studio time to go back in and re-record piano tracks and organ tracks. And um, uh, actually, I I hesitate to share. Well, I'll just I'll, I'll just tell you. We don't, we, we on, on our on our drive on the way up, uh, uh, there was a, a a real tragedy. Jackie got a phone call, and and uh, um, her her cousin was was killed. Um, some some punk uh, a, a drug you know guy was trying to break into steel. Anyway, it was it was just one. Of, she got the call, so we're on our way to the studio after the concert, and she gets this call. So that meant that her vocal tracks also. I mean. She would be on a, on, a, on, a, on a high in one moment when things are going really well. And then all of a sudden, this emotion would come. Would come. And it was the first, I mean, it was, it was somebody who was also close to her. Um, so that, that meant that she had to go back in and re-record things as well. And then, so anyway, as we were doing, we had that previous line in the, the um, uh, My Favorite Color CD in the pipeline. Uh, we, put, we put that one out. And then we went back to, to go over this and re-record the... Um, uh, the keyboard tracks and, and Jackie's vocals. And then uh, we were almost ready to put it to bed. And I was listening back to the uh, where we were at that point, And I thought, you know, man, horns would sound great on some of these tracks. And uh, Tom is just like he the, the, he played keyboard on this. And, and he's a great composer, Tom Larson. And uh, I said, hey, Tom, what do you think about... You know, maybe you could uh, pen a couple of uh, horn tracks. He got very excited about that. And so we, uh, the two of us flew to Chicago and, uh, man, we got the, I, I, I was unable to, there were horns that we have used in the past with, with Jackie that I was hoping um, would be available, but they weren't, they, they weren't available. Um, but there were some young up and comers whom I didn't, Victor Garcia, this trumpet player, 
I had no idea. And then he started to play and it was like, oh man, that, that, that break in, um, uh, Bel Air barbecue, he went without stopping. He went directly into the solo and it was like, First take, it just totally blew us. We were both cracking up in the in, in the control. I'm like, who, who is this guy? I had such a such a great time. I uh, got, got your email, and then I was checking out this. And I've I've been I've been grooving on this album. It's like I I love I love the arrangements and I love the songs themselves. And so these are all uh, Hans Sturm originals. That yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. How cool is that? I, I mean, talk about it. this. Must have been a project long in the making, right? Have you been Have you been chewing away on these tunes for? A, a, couple decade plus probably oh sure so but you know i i've been writing for jackie for a long time and we've done some some of my tunes uh before in, in previous previous recordings one or two along the way some of them were were, were very early like uh, uh the early version of of dark butterflies that's uh uh, uh abasa uh it's got int- interesting chord changes that move a little unexpectedly, and uh, the 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 melody is very angular but beautiful, slow and uh, a very very lovely kind of tune. That was written while we were recording. I mean, so that 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 dates back to um, the, probably the early nineties. But but it it it, it underwent um, you know it underwent changes and revisions as. Um, as we be as as we performed the piece, at first she didn't like it. There was there were a couple of lyrics she did didn't resonate with her, and so I needed to go back and tweak that. And and it was also um, uh, a challenge. I mean, some of the some of the, uh, the, the where where how the melodic line works it's 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 not easy to hear. It's got a wide range and some tricky intervals. Um, so she didn't really feel entirely comfortable with the piece until more recently. So even though it's an older an older piece. Yeah. But some of the tunes, like um, um, uh, "Sweet Dreams," uh, was mu- mu- much more recent. You know, with all the uh, political stress and strife and things happening in the world, that that ha- that was a much more um, uh, a recent tune relative to, relative to the record. Yeah. And so are all are are these all your lyrics as well? Uh, yeah. Wow. So so what comes? I, I just got to ask because I've always fascinated. Like, what what comes? What comes first, music or lyrics for you? The for, chicken or the egg? Yeah. Exactly. Man. Exactly. <laughs> uh, it 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 depends. You know, a, a tune a tune like time, which is um, word play. I love to, to 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 play with words. Language is is fascinating to me, and and uh, so that's like uh, stringing together all of these cliches uh, uh, related to time. Good time. Every time, part time, over time, father time. And then um, I had a I had a bass groove I was playing with, and I had this idea about um, about time I was playing with, and I I wonder if these things would would, would work together, and and then but I wanted to have this um, it needed a bridge, and so then I wanted to have this. Uh, uh, kind of, you know, storyline in there, but it, it, that didn't really work. And so, you know, you just, you just, you, you're playing with the ideas in that case, uh, it was word driven for sure, a word and groove driven. And then, and then a vehicle um, uh, to, uh, to let John Mulder loose, you know, the, the, the guitar player, just to let him, you know, it gets, it, it starts off, you know, sort of the tick tock kind of, you know, um, the tick gong, 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 tick gong, gong. It's hard to feel where one is at, at, at the beginning, to feel kind of where that groove is. And then, and then you just have this kind of uh, 
ding, 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 kind of this tick tock thing. And then it just slowly builds and builds. And then he, but that was definitely word driven. Whereas uh, something like the song for uh, the, the Nola love song, the, uh, to New Orleans, uh, the melody came first. Um, to that one, the, the the melody and the tune came first, and then, and then uh, uh, later, then uh, after after Katrina happened, because we had we had been down there for, uh, uh, we, we were trying to get out. This was there's a story behind. <laughs> you want to hear? <laughs> yeah, I would love to hear it. Absolutely. So, um, way y- years ago, uh, Jackie's youngest brother Randy worked for American Airlines. And uh, years ago, uh, as as part of the perks of working on the airlines, um, you would get you could get these vouchers uh, to fly anywhere that American Airlines flew. And so uh, he would get like maybe 10 of these a year and then he would parcel them out as gifts to family members. And so anyway, uh, we had a pair of these vouchers, the golden tickets. And and it was a it was, you know, a Chicago winter, man. It was it was a brutal winter. It was already brutal. There was it, it had been frozen with snow on the ground and we decided we were going to get you know go someplace warm so we got all our gear together in the snorkels and the fins and the trundled out to to o'hare and anywhere looking to get to the caribbean and uh so we try to get on standby on these flights so the upshot was that our bags went to the caribbean uh but we didn't get, we didn't get on the flight so uh we we wound up um uh, we we saw that there was a flight to New Orleans. I was like, okay, close enough. And so uh, it turns out that Christmas time, at least then, uh, was a low time in New Orleans. It was, you know, uh, before the, I, I can't remember. You know, it's, it's not it's not uh, the the New Year's. It's not the the what was what's the big New Orleans? Is the Sugar Bowl that was going on down there? Oh yeah, right, right. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Well, it turns out it's a low time, and it was fantastic. They have these uh, uh, Revlon dinners. Uh, where restaurants compete for uh, uh, for your for your business with uh, you know multiple courses and flights of wine, and then the cool thing is, of course, uh, uh, Saint Nicholas doesn't come with the reindeer, right? It's uh, Papa Noel, and he comes on a barge up the Mississippi, pulled by alligators, and um, so along along the levees, they build uh, bonfires uh, to light the way on Christmas Eve, but these aren't like normal bonfires they make uh, uh wooden houses and dragons and sculptures and then they light these things on fire and they're they're massive the flames go up and it's just like oh we had such a good time and and the the, the food and the music of course and everything and and then uh, years later uh, uh katrina happened and that's when uh i i, I put lyrics to the song i I, I felt the song always had a second line kind of thing, but uh, it didn't really have a, a home for lyrics. And that's when it just kind of, it just kind of, when that, all that went down, it just kind of spilled, spilled out of me. Uh, all the bit about, uh, uh, you know, jambalaya and gamba etouffee and just the, the, the wrought iron of the French Quarter. Voodoo child and a holy man. Jelly wool since time began, darling. Talk about a city with a unique and distinctive char- char- character, and I'd l- I've never been down there for for the holidays. But man, I can totally see I can totally see oh, that yeah. happening. Yeah, you got you got. I mean, I I, I can't recommend it uh, highly enough, man. That we we went to this place. I can I can even I, I can even remember. I mean, it was so many years ago, but I still remember the Upper Line Restaurant still exists. And uh, it's out of the French Quarter in the Garden District. Uh, and this woman uh, who, who runs it, I, I'm not going to remember her name, but it's like a, a modern primitivism art in, in, in the dining room. And she did a Thomas Jefferson Revlon dinner. So she and her chef went back to when Jefferson was the uh, ambassador to Paris and kept copious notes. You know, he was the one who brought wine back to the U.S. I mean, he was like a real... Anyway, so they went back and looked at all of these dinners that he had had and then made a New Orleans spin. And it was like, I can't remember. I can't remember. What they, but it was like six courses with a flight of wine for, I don't know, $35 a person. I mean, it was like so you couldn't, you know, it would be hundreds of dollars today, you know, for that meal. Anyway, it was it was fantastic. I highly recommend it. It was such a great time. Huh? 
Hans. Such a pleasure to catch up with you. Folks, check out this album. Doesn't it sound fabulous? Rose Finger Dawn, these Hanstrom originals, this great brass band, evocative lyrics, Jackie Allen's fabulous singing, What's Not to Love. And if you haven't before, be sure to check out Hans's past appearances here on the podcast, especially last year's in-depth interview all about teaching and mindset and growth and practicing and you name it. So much valuable takeaway content from that episode. Thanks again for tuning in. I love doing this show. I love having you along with me for the journey. And I would love to hear from you. Feedback at ContraBasedConversations.com will put you in touch with me. I'd love to hear your thoughts, ideas for guests, topics, anything like that. Or just give a shout and say hi. Let me know where you're from, what's up with you, what your bass is like, what bow you play, all that kind of good stuff. I really would appreciate it. That's going to do it for another episode of ContraBased Conversations. We will see you again soon for more life on the low end of the spectrum. Street, Mardi Gras.